The oldest boat on record was found in the Netherlands and dates back between the years 8200 and 7600 BC. So needless to say, humans have been traveling by boat for a pretty damn long time. And it still remains a popular form of transportation today. But add up all of the passenger boats, military ships, fishing cargo ships, and fishing vessels, and you're looking at millions upon millions of ships out in the sea over time. But things don't always go according to plan out on the high seas. Systems fail, ships encounter horrific storms, and sometimes the vessels don't always make it back to port. So join us for today's video as we take a look at 15 of the most amazing abandoned ships. Number 15. Cincinnati Ghost Ship While it was in service, this first entry on our list today was known as the Circle Line 5, but today it has a more sinister name, the Cincinnati Ghost Ship. The Cincinnati Ghost Ship is well over a century old, and it's nicely wedged in the mud of a creek right outside of the Ohio River. This abandoned ship isn't going anywhere. It was built back in 1902. The Cincinnati Ghost Ship served as the personal luxury yacht for an incredibly rich railroad executive of the time. But as you can probably already tell, things quite didn't pan out for the ship. The vessel was drafted into World War I and renamed the USS Sachem. It managed to make it out of the Great War in one piece, which was perfect for the Allies because it was drafted again for World War II. The Cincinnati Ghost Ship made the rounds in the United States Navy for years before finally being decommissioned and living out its days as a tour boat in and around the New York Harbor. The ship's last captain, Robert Miller, made the decision to take her back home to dock at one of his properties where it sat unused for what seemed like forever. Over time, the Cincinnati Ghost Ship slowly sank into the creek behind his house where it remains today and perhaps until the end of time. Number 14. Kiptopeak Concrete Ships Just off the coast of the Kiptopeak State Park in Virginia's Chesapeake Bay are nine abandoned ships simply known as the Kiptopeak Concrete Ships. The Kiptopeak Concrete Ships may sound like something out of a high fantasy novel, but they are in fact a very real sight for unsuspecting travelers. These concrete ships were actually in service of the U.S. military, built during World War II, and since steel was in such short supply at the time, concrete quickly took over as the material of choice. Most people probably wouldn't have guessed it, but concrete can float just as well as steel, sometimes even better. So try and remember that the next time you're walking down the concrete sidewalk of a big city. It's pretty cool. Each of these concrete ships weigh in at close to 5,000 tons apiece and are about 120 yards long. That's a lot of concrete. But as the war started coming to a close, these massive ships were sent away and stored in military bases all across the U.S. Later on, the Virginia Ferry Company needed a way to protect their pier from weather and waves. And these nine unused ships fit the bill and haven't moved since. And while they were no longer facing war, they now had to overcome the weather. Winds, waves, and erosions have been chipping away at these nine awesome abandoned ships for decades as they're locked in a tough battle to see who will win, nature or human ingenuity. Number 13. The Mary D. Hume If you ever make it to the beautiful state of Oregon in the U.S., then go for a drive up the coast, you may find this next amazing abandoned ship. The Mary D. Hume was a 19th century merchant steamship that, in its heyday, hauled cargo back and forth from Oregon to San Francisco before serving as a whale hunting vessel all the way out in the icy waters of Alaska. Throughout its history, the Mary D. Hume sank in the ice, was recovered, and underwent three engine replacements before retiring in 1977. There's no denying that it made the rounds way back when and probably saw its fair share of amazing things on the ocean. The ship was to be preserved and brought to a museum, but along the way, the ship malfunctioned and caused her to fall from her sling and straight into the mud at Gold Beach in Oregon. She was recovered and repairs were made, only for another accident to cause her to sink again in 1985. Poor Mary D. Hume. So now her fate is to remain abandoned but not forgotten, forever at sea as moss, seaweed, and barnacles creep their way up her hull. But ship enthusiasts and adventurers rejoice because she's very easy to visit and is even recognized by the National Register of Historical Places. Not all shipwrecks need to have a bad ending. Number 12. The Peter Iredale 
There's no need to leave the Oregon coastline just yet because our next entry also permanently calls the area home. The Peter Iredale is a merchant class ship built at the turn of the 20th century in England. And one foggy night in the early 1900s, she fell victim to brutal southeast winds and rough currents. And as it always does, nature won this battle at sea. Attempts to veer the Peter Iredale around were in vain, and the ship crashed into Clatsop Beach in Oregon and snapped three of its masts clean in half. Fortunately for the crew, though, everyone, even the captain, made it out alive and unscathed and were quickly rescued. And as you can imagine, their ship was not so lucky. The ship had been abandoned for over 100 years and has now fallen victim to both the sands of time and the sands of the beach. Erosion, salt water, and the area's high winds have corroded the ship and converted it into a husk of its former self. But she's still there today. Now anyone with a MAPS app can easily find her and climb aboard her remains. Number 11. The Francisco Marzan If you've ever done a tour of the U.S. Great Lakes, then perhaps you've come across this next amazing abandoned ship. Just off the southwest portion of Manitou Island in Lake Michigan is the wreckage of the Francisco Marzan, a steel-hulled freighter that would sail from Chicago to the Netherlands in the mid-20th century. But it made one long voyage in 1960 that, although routine, would also be its last. The snowy winds out on the ocean reached up to 40 miles an hour and beat the ship consistently until the Francisco Morazan ran aground. The 14-person crew, as well as the captain and his family, were all stranded along with their icy shipwreck. Rescuers were able to save everyone, but the ship was forced to stay put. Today, drivers and boaters can take a look at the Francisco Morazan shipwreck, and there's a ferry from Leland, Michigan that will take you to South Manitou Island, the site of the ship's final resting place. Number 10. Homebush Bay Shipwrecks Homebush Bay in Sydney, Australia is home to some beautiful vegetation that, interestingly enough, is growing right out of their famous shipwrecks. There are several abandoned ships in the bay, with two of the most well-known being the SS Airfield and the SS Mortlake. Homebush Bay was to serve as a shipbreaking yard, where ships would go to be decommissioned and recycled for parts. But these two abandoned ships have managed to stand the test of time. And while they may be rust buckets today, they've managed to transform into these massive chia pets. Since there are plenty of towering condos and shopping malls along the water of Homebush Bay, the SS Airfield and SS Mortlake also make for great evening views for the locals. Number 9. SS Maheno When the SS Maheno burst onto the scene over 100 years ago in 1905, it was considered cutting-edge technology. This ship had a maximum passenger capacity of just under 900 and was built with a refrigerator cargo hold a smoking room, and all of the latest and greatest electric-powered safety equipment. She was the height of fashion at the time. The SS Maheno served as a luxury ocean transport before being converted into a hospital ship when World War I broke out, and all of her magnificent dining halls and smoking rooms were quickly repurposed and transformed to hospital wards and operating rooms. The SS Maheno waded through the waters valiantly, transporting wounded soldiers to and from the front lines overseas and she eventually retired when the fighting ended. Luckily, she was returned to her original owner and converted back to a commercial liner. But exactly one day before Independence Day in 1935, while being towed back into the harbor for her official and well-earned retirement, the tow line snapped loose during a storm at sea. She drifted off into the ocean with her eight crew members still on board, all of whom were helpless since her propellers had been removed before the tow. Rescue teams spent seven days searching for the Mahano and her crew, only to find the shipwreck off the coast of Fraser Island. To this day, the SS Mahano is wedged deep into the sand and is forever eroding. Number 8. MV Asalama The MV Asalama is the most recent entry on our list, as she was lost at sea in 2008. During her service, the MV Asalama was both a cargo and a passenger liner, that is, until she ran aground and laid stranded five miles off the Moroccan coastline. And did we mention that all 113 passengers were still on board during the incident? Luckily for everyone on the ship, though, they were all rescued and unharmed. But the massive ship was not so lucky. 
Because the shipwreck isn't even 20 years old, she's still intact and hasn't sustained too much damage from erosion and the salty winds that blow against her constantly. Despite being such a recent shipwreck, it doesn't look like anyone is coming to save the day for the MV Asalama anytime soon. And because she's so close to the coast, catching a glimpse of her from the beach or even paying her a visit is all relatively feasible. Just don't expect to find any buried treasure on board. Number 7. MV Captayanis, also known as the Sugar Boat. If you think a name like the MV Captayanis is fun to say, wait until you hear the nickname for this next amazing abandoned ship. Better known as the Sugar Boat, the MV Captayanis was a Greek sugar carrying vessel that met its fate during a January storm one night in 1974. The Captayanis was making just another routine trip bringing sugar to a small town in Scotland. But when it anchored offshore, the storm caused the ship's anchor to drag underneath the waters and quickly puncture the hull of the vessel under the waterline. The whole thing happened so fast that the captain made the tough split-second decision to beach his vessel in shallow water. The captain and his crew were eventually rescued that night, but by dawn, the Captain Yanis was flooded that it listed onto its side. Cut to almost 40 years later, and the sugar boat is still there, fully visible from the coastline and home to birds and sea creatures, who all sound like they got a pretty sweet deal on rent. Number 6. La Famille Express Most abandoned ships aren't set amongst the gorgeous backdrop of the Caribbean, but La Famille Express is the exception. Abandoned just a few miles away from Turks and Caicos, La Famille Express was built on the other side of the world in the Caspian Sea in 1952. So how did it end up on a permanent Caribbean vacation? Well, this vessel began its career as a Russian vessel named Fort Shevenko in English, and she transported all sorts of supplies to the remote oil rigs of the Soviet Union. But like many other ships, she traded hands more than once and was eventually brought to a port off the Keiko coast and christened with the name we know her as today. But in 2004, she fell victim to Hurricane Francis. She was absolutely rocked by nature's fury and drifted, albeit violently, 12 miles away from her port. She still sits in the sand today and is a popular attraction amongst divers and boaters who wish to gaze upon her rusted remains in the clear blue waters. La Famille Express sits a little too far out to swim to on your own, but hiring a small boat to take you there is no problem. Or if you're in the mood for a little extra adventure, then a jet ski is a great way to get there too. Number 5. Edouard Bolin On the northern part of the Atlantic coast of Namibia is an area called the Skeleton Coast. It's where the very rough seas meet desert as far as the eye can see, so it certainly lives up to its name. But what could a place like the Skeleton Coast possibly have to do with any amazing abandoned ships? The Edward Bolin managed to find its way to one of the most inhospitable environments on the planet in 1909. This vessel was traversing the waters not too far off the Namibian coastline, but when it encountered incredibly thick fog, the Edward Bolin got a little too close for comfort. So close that it slammed into the coastline, ran aground, and stranded her captain and crew. Thankfully, though, the only one hurt here was the ship. Over a century has passed and the ship now sits abandoned, almost 1,600 feet from the original crash site. The whole situation is shrouded in a bit of mystery, but it does give the Edward Bolin the appearance that it's managed to sail through the sand dunes all on its own. Number 4. HMVS Cerebus The HMVS Cerebus was built back in 1870 as a breastwork monitor warship. She was a nasty beast and certainly lived up to her name, patrolling and protecting Melbourne, Australia, a coastal city, from maritime invaders during the First World War. And despite her original purpose, the HMVS Cerebus managed to live out her days without firing a single shot in battle and never left her home port. It's a classic case, though, of better to be safe than sorry. Later on, she even managed to serve as an important supply vessel to help out nearby ships and even submarines, serving her country in both times of war and times of peace. But all good things must come to an end, and so the Cerebus was retired and used for scrap. Her hull was towed out near Black Rock in Australia, and sat there now mostly underwater ever since, providing anyone lucky enough with a bird's eye view a pretty amazing sight, seeing as how it's now best appreciated from above. Number 3. SS Kakapo 
The South African coastline is dotted with downed and decommissioned vessels that served roles over the years, but there's one that certainly stands out among the rest. We're of course talking about the SS Kakapo. She made her last voyage in May of 1900 while transporting coal and eventually crashing into the Long Beach Peninsula. No one knows for sure what happened to cause the crash, but the notoriously rough waters, jagged coastline, and thick fogs of the area provide some pretty decent indicators of the possible truth. As of today, the majority of the SS Kakapo's hull is submerged under the sand, and what does manage to peak above it is rusted and heavily eroded. But with the ribs and rudders jutting out, she almost looks like a sea beast from a long-forgotten time. And now, over a century later, folks can visit the SS Kakapo to have a look for themselves just by taking a 40-minute walk from the nearest parking lot. Number 2. E.C. Waters There was once a wealthy North American businessman named E.C. Waters who commissioned two boats for himself in Yellowstone Lake, one of which he named after himself. He used his newly christened E.C. Waters as part of a successful business venture burying people around in the early 1900s. But Yellowstone is a national park, meaning there are plenty of rules in force. And Mr. Waters was not happy when the park officials had enough of his wealthy antics and attempted to attract another ferry business to the area with the hopes of putting him out of business. But he had already spent around, by today's standards, close to $2 million, so he wasn't going to go down without a fight. But that's exactly what the ship bearing his namesake did. Waters was eventually banned from Yellowstone National Park, and he simply chose to abandon his giant ferry there in 1907. It's certainly one of the stranger stories on this list, but the remains of the failed E.C. Waters are still mostly intact and can be found in Yellowstone today. Number 1. World Discoverer The World Discoverer is a wild child of the 1970s. Constructed in 1974 to lead small expeditions that your traditional cruise ships may be a little too big to navigate certain exotic locales, the World Discoverer was also built with reinforced ice-breaking hull, meaning it could traverse even the most frigid conditions of the Arctic Circle. This ship truly lived up to its name, but if you've made it this far on the list, then that means there isn't a happy ending. This vessel made its final voyage in the year 2000, where it struck a coral reef around the Solomon Islands. The hull was breached and the World Discoverer took on way too much water way too quickly, and so the captain beached his vessel at the nearby Roderick Bay. Rescue teams showed up fast and the passengers were okay in the end, but the ship began to list 20 degrees to the side as more and more water poured into the hull and she became a total loss. Of course, a salvage operation was attempted in the same year, but when the local tribe began to attack scavengers, the mission was immediately called off. The World Discoverer sits in the jungle untouched and will likely remain intact for the next century, long after we're gone. No one but the locals will ever be able to reach it. Watch our Waves playlist for more top 15 videos about massive waves. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best wave videos.